kind of hard to see her in that little picture. But hey, we're working road today. Now uh, we got about two and a half miles of road to work, and then we'll start playing in a field. See if I can keep up with her. We got right at 30 acres left that's in the windrow. Get it bailed, and maybe I can see about getting that spring oats cut. Just all kinds of fun. There's one of the issues we have. It grows a wad of hay in the middle of the nodder. So, one twine won't be on two bales. I gotta cut the twine off, swing the nodder up, clean it, put it back in, and then the top twine, which is right there, goes down through that slot. I just drop two or three feet of it down into the bale so it's still there when it comes around next time. The bottom twine is, well, right underneath the frame. No, maybe not. Actually, it's right there. An untied end. I can actually tie it so the next one ain't bad, but this one's gonna have a broke twine. Oh well, fun. Gotta love having everything along trees. I watch the mirrors really close because I don't like messing mirrors so. up. Every now and then we break one. The mirror won't get hit here, it'll all just go over. And let's see. Shane Holtz was showing stuff off on his baler in a video yesterday. That round thing up there, that's my Nodder fan. Hydraulic drive, right there's the pump. Flywheel spinning, fans turning. And there's a tube. I don't know, what is it, a five or six inch tube? And then it's got like two inch tubes off of it. Going to each Nodder. That's great. And there's a little black hose you might be able to see up there off that tube. That actually goes up to a camera that's on the back side of that oversized loop sign up there. I don't use it much anymore, so I gotta turn my lights on to put power to it. But uh, it blows the dust off the camera. I figured a half inch airline on here wouldn't hurt anything, it's not taking enough, but it's just enough to keep it going good. And we should have been almost done with this piece by now, but I don't know. She's had issues with the rakes. Sometimes she can't seem to get them all the way down. I don't know why. So we adjusted them down, and now they're all the way down, and I, I don't like it. I think they need to come up another half turn, but in order to do a half a turn, you got to take some stuff apart. And number six. Oh, there it went. I going to say it was hung on the bill hook, but it let loose. Looks like Christmas up there. There's the other fun thing. Got all these people that got ground like that. Just let it go to shit. That used to be an orchard two or three owners ago. Uh, owner before the one that has it now actually had us go in and disc that all up and make it smooth and pretty. And then he sold the place. And of course, you know, well, it's my property. I don't want you doing anything with it. Well, let me see. You get a hell of a break on your property taxes if it's farm, and uh, it gets used, and you make a little money on it. But too many people that work for the big companies, they, they don't see it that way. They don't want to make any money because they actually need to lose money or they pay too much in income tax, I guess. Sure wish I had that problem. Oh well. And I hate like right here. I need to shift down because it's a little heavier. But anyway, it's almost noon on Tuesday. The 4th, that's what it is. We're just plugging away. Uh, about 14 acres here total. There's about three in that little piece where we started. And there's 13 or 14 bales on the ground out there. Just to give you an idea, and those bales will weigh between 13 and 1400 pounds. So that's pretty much a normal yield for that one, probably. And with these windrows, I've been running.
pretty much five miles an hour, slowing down here and there. And I like the moisture, it's showing 13, 14 percent on this field along here, shaded. Makes a solider bale. And I better slow down a little. I actually had an issue earlier, I plugged the freaking pickup and it was a weird plug, it just blocked off so nothing could go in. Very rarely happens that way. But it can happen. You know, it didn't stop anything. Everything's in there just turning. It just couldn't go anywhere. Eh, more gophers. Front piece wasn't too bad, just a little one little strip. Back here, I think it's just this bottom strip with gophers, but if we get done here, we'll probably raise those rakes back up a turn just because. I had her raise them back up a turn already. I don't know. We dropped the left one one turn and dropped the right one two turns. Number five took a minute. It wasn't hung on the hill hook, it was hung on a knife arm. Spin you around quick, get you dizzy like me. Oh yeah, then you got these spots here. All this nice timber. There's a house there. There's a house right through there. There's a house right through. I think there's five houses beside this piece of property right here. They got, you know, like their little two acres of trees. Then they wonder why their roofs don't hold up because the trees are right against the house. They wonder why they have all kinds of other issues because the trees are right up against the house. And yeah, my sea ink just says there's a hydraulic issue somewhere, but I think it's a broke wire or something. I don't know. I just know that everything else on the monitor is normal. And if it was really an issue, it wouldn't be normal. Oh, I'm wondering how we got a small one-sided windrow. It's because I straightened this out when I cut it rather than making a snake along the trees that are sticking out. I'd rather drive a straight line, so a whole lot quicker and easier. So anyway, I'm going to leave you there. And yeah, a bunch of gophers right in here. Always has been. So it's going to be dirtier. Oh well. Just thinking, for those of you who uh, like to figure out how many bales come off a field? We can do that here. You've seen kind of the size of the windrows. They don't look much like anything there because they've been laying down. That stuff's tight to the ground. That's tight enough to the ground that I got to run the teeth on the baler right in the ground if I'm going to pick them up. This kind of shows you. It's right there. It's right against both front tires. There's 14 acres here. And I already said there's either 13 or 14 bales out in that front piece. So, where are your guesses down in the comments? And uh, these bales weigh, should be right at 1,300 pounds, maybe over that. There won't be any under 1,300 pounds, I don't think. Especially when you add a little bit of real estate in it, like here. And I lied, I thought it was gophers in this field. Their mole mounds is the only thing I found. I have not seen a single gopher mound. They're even funner to get rid of. But anyway, throw your guess in. Um, there's already if we're not at a semi-load, we're real close to it. So, yeah. Take a guess, see what happens. Oh, and in case I forget to mention it later, at the end, number one sent me a clip this morning. She finished stacking big bales of what we did yesterday. And uh, she had a couple of deer. She had a doe and a fawn out there visiting with her. I'll throw that on the end. 
And anybody who wants to know that other place, there's, oh, what is there, about 15 or 16 acres total there, but we took probably nine acres off in small bales, and there was 33 big bales on the ground when we were done. And I don't remember how many small bales, it was pushing 500, I think. 500 at about 80 or 85 pounds a piece. So there, you've been almost all the way around the field now this time, so make your guesses. And yeah, you can tell where we left some. Those strips over there because it was down. Same thing here. This grass likes to lodge. And it gets down tight to the ground so the mower can't pick it up. I don't care what you got for a mower, it won't pick it up. Combine will pick it up. I've picked up lots of downed wheat and downed oats with a combine. It'll do it, but hay mower won't. So, like I say, take your guess, see what we get. Hey look, I got me a helper. She's a dirty girl. Let's see if I can zoom in on the right one. That twine holder right there, tensioner, has no twine through it. Number two bottom, the knot hung up coming out of the box tensioner. Took it loose. But that's not why I stopped. I stopped because number four was screwed up. So, yeah, now there's an extra bale screwed up I didn't know about. Then while I was stopped, the knot are tied. So, yeah, the bale in here doesn't have anything on that one. Next one won't either. But it'll be ready for the one after that. Not too bad. Make quite a few bales without having any issues. Nice if you go a lot farther without any issues. And if I get her back there, she's trying to wedge a screwdriver in there to open that up so she gets twine through it. It's a pain in the ass. It'd be nice if they put a cam or something on her, you can just flip up out of the way to open it. But that's not how it is. So anyway, this is the fun we're having. Almost done with this field too. As in really almost done with it. And this is one of the dirtiest jobs there is on around around a big spur baler. All that junk on the axle and a little breeze, all of that goes right inside your shirt. Guaranteed. Oh yeah, the fun part is after she gets it through there, it's gotta go through that, that pulley right next to her. And then back up into the needle and then tied back here. So I'll be back.